Before getting into the fourth and final chapter of Midnight Train, let's have a brief recap of what's happened so far. On board the Midnight Express, before arriving to Bluebell, the train stops and everyone else aside from Luna and Neil have disappeared. You know from the offset that something is going down with the characters of Midnight Train when you traverse through the buildings of chapters 1, 2 and 3 and most certainly as well 4. Diana Lovelace from Chapter 1 committed illegal experimentations before boarding the Midnight Express. She had the intentions of killing either Neil or Luna to steal their working pocket watch to board the next train. Deep down in her heart, this was something that she ultimately hated. She experimented for the hopes of one day saving lives overtaking lives. Through an interrogation, many conversations and intense moments, Diana succumbed under the weight of her own actions. She trusted Luna and Neil to find a way to save Diana from the cruelty of the Midnight Express. Apollo Carson from Chapter 2 committed manslaughter when the mayor's son was assaulting him. Apollo wanted him to stop but instead inadvertently shoved him into a metal fence in which the mayor's son was impaled. To escape certain imprisonment, he boarded the Midnight Express from the money he took from the body of the mayor's son. From seeing Luna and Neil for the first time, he suggested to them to divide as the chance of betrayal could happen. But as time progressed and interrogation against Apollo happened, he realized that trust is not something to be discarded. When the time came to board the train, he was on the rails as to whether or not to break the rules and board the train without a working pocket watch. He broke the rules by boarding the train and was punished for doing so. Selene Ambrose from Chapter 3 committed a lot of thefts from people to survive and to help Apollo, who was also in the same boat as Selene. Longtime friend of Luna from the orphanage they both stayed at. Luna left the orphanage, leaving Selene unhappy and confused. Through her actions of stealing after escaping the orphanage herself, she wanted to better herself and through the money she stole, she boarded the Midnight Express. From the previous two chapters, Neil quickly depicted from Selene's knowledge of parts of the building and her attempt to hide the arms on her pocket watch that she was also one who had intentions of stealing a pocket watch. This, like Apollo in the end, wasn't the case and Selene quickly opened up to Neil that her intentions are pure, to get Luna and Neil onto the train. All of the chapters so far have had their impacts on the story of Midnight Train, but Chapter 3 is where the majority of the questions and answers have been put into place. Why are our characters trapped on the Midnight Express? Is the Midnight Express a curse? Can the curse of the Midnight Express be broken? On the build-up in Chapters 1 and 2, we collected straws of evidence that our characters are in this curse for a reason. And in Chapter 3, Neil has pieced together the reason why they are trapped, the reason that they are all here, along with what all five of them have in common. They have all committed a crime, a crime in which the police have unable to capture and arrest them for. Feared even by the police, Black Gear built the Midnight Express in the hopes that criminals who are unable to be caught can be trapped by the curse of the train itself. Diana performed illegal experiments. Apollo committed manslaughter. Selene stole from people. These have been spoken through chapters 1 to 3. But near the end of chapter 3, we piece together what Luna did. She killed the terrorist who took her parents' lives away. Last but not least, Neil. He commits a crime related to Black Gear, the very organization that trapped the five characters on the Midnight Express. If you remember the very end of Chapter 3, you know what's coming next. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the fourth and final chapter to Midnight Train. And here we are, folks, the final chapter of Midnight Train. Quite a sad thing to witness and behold as it's the end of this lovely journey, but also it's going to be fun and excited to see what awaits next. And also, what did Neil commit to Black Gear?
Luna, I don't want to hide it from you anymore. It's time to tell you about my crime. I know I should have told you sooner. Maybe you won't see me the same way anymore, but I think it's fair to tell you. The truth is that I... Luna? Don't you want to hear it? I would guess this is at the right time. You're still affected by what happened with Celine. It's understandable. I thought it would be a good idea to tell you before entering the last building since right now we don't have a time limit. But the right time will be when you're ready to hear it. Too much has happened, right? Everything is going to be okay. You will see. Celine you taught us that we should always be optimistic. And here we are, at the final building. Ah, the train stopped. It's time to face the final building. What is currently going through Luna's head right now? Surely there's some uncertainty there, especially with the nightmare regarding all the characters hating on her. Which is not the case whatsoever. All five of these characters have committed a crime of sorts. Oh gosh, this looks more like a prison. Yeah, the last prison. Yeah, that sort of look like jail cells. I want to tell you something before we enter. Thanks for giving me a reason to keep going. If it weren't for you, I would have given up in the other buildings. But now I feel I have to keep moving forward no matter what happens. I must do it for you and the others. Thank you. Really. No conversations required. Let's see. Notebook, pocket watch, note. And a letter. A letter that you wrote on the train. Let's... Okay, we can't refrain... We, uh... <laughs> Rehearse ourselves of what the letter says. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, the time is reset back to three hours. For better or worse, this will be the last time our pocket watches will reset. Let's find that stupid train. We won't allow it to judge our past sins. Neither ours nor anyone else's. We would do it for Diana. Hmm? Did you write something? Do you hate what the Midnight Express does? That is a complicated question. It's a visceral thing, because yes, it captures criminals, but we are the victims in this tale in a way. All the people I've met here have turned out to be good heart, despite committing a crime, including us too. However, the train must have also trapped many people who caused harm in our world. I can't deny that. I'm sure most of the people who ended up here were corrupt criminals, without any kind of morals or goodness. Unfortunately, most criminals are like that. But answering your question, yes, I hate what the Midnight Express does. I will always defend that everyone should have a fair trial. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the train, there's something that I don't quite understand. If the purpose of the train is to catch criminals, why do they give us a chance to escape? It doesn't make any sense. It should be a purgatory thing, really, where you think you've met the end of the, ch the, ch the line, the chapter, the rails, but instead it sends you all the way back to the beginning. What kind of twisted fate is that? Well, we better get going before we lose one... <laughs> we lose more time, yes. Right. Oh. Dear passengers, do you deserve to go to the real world? Okay, Black Gear. There should be two new characters in this tale. Both of which are going to commence evil upon our adventures. Is the train communicating with us? I don't know if I deserve to go to the real world, but I'm not going to let a train decide that for me. You certainly are a lot more confident since Chapter 3, Neil. You're not that nervous boy that we started off with on the beginning of this tale. Yeah, it definitely feels like a prison. What other horrifics are out here? Oh, and it's foggy too. Huh, what is this? The room is filled with gas. I can't breathe. Damn it! Luna, let's get out of here as soon as possible. We can't move. Why are you going so slow? Are you feeling unwell? At this rate, we'll run out of air. We must find a way... We must run and find a way out. Come on, Luna. Luna, why? Ugh, I'll take care of this. Oh, 
gosh, are we carrying Luna now? <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Find the way out before Neo and Luna, Luna runs out of air. Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's inspect everything. Okay. Um. Oh, it's a race. I think. Okay, we're going to run over that. Okay, uh, let's go straight. Can we make it over that, though? Of course we can. I didn't even see that. <laughs> Some of the holes are just so small to try and find. Oh, there's a barrel at the end of this path. That's no good. Hmm. I wonder if this area reminds uh, Luna of certain explosions in the past. Especially with her past with, um... Her parents being gone by explosions. Uh, something else there. God, this place is a maze. This place is amazing. No puns here. This is our life on the line here, for goodness sakes. Oh gosh, draped there. And another ended path. I'm sorry, Luna. We're the ones carrying you to victory now. It was Luna carrying Neil, but this time it's Neil carrying Luna. Do you remember? I think it was chapter two? Hmm. God, this place is abysmal in its own ways. Definitely feels like a prison. Oh, gosh. An another crossroad? Oh, there's a door there. I wonder what was else in that labyrinth if you took another path. <sighs> we did it. Are you okay? We just entered the building and I'm already exhausted. I imagine that this prison would be much worse. Luna, were you going slow on purpose? Don't tell me you were planning. No, it doesn't matter. It can't be. Let's keep going. We can't stop now. Hero Neil, both working together. And there's a wisp in there as well. I'll keep that in mind just in case if there's any secrets in that labyrinth. Dear passengers, is it fair to go to the real world while they stay, they stay here? They? Is it referring to Diane, Apollo, and Selene? What is truly unfair is that they are trapped here. We're going to find a way to get them out of here. Okay, what are these wisps? I don't like what I'm seeing through the bars. They were enemies last time around, obviously. Mm, spikes there and a red skull over there. Hmm. Jail cell there. We can't go through there. But. That's a doll. That isn't the real one. S Celine? Celine! Wait, it's not real. It's just a realistic figure of Celine. Ugh, can't it look at it. Even if it's fake. Indeed. A guillotine. Just looking at it gives me chills. What's been the history of that? It's a wooden stake used to execute witches in the past. It's a realistic figure of Selene, yeah. No good whatsoever. And there's a bucket of blood there. The bucket is filled with blood. Hmm, there's nothing inside the bucket. What if this is going to be the hardest chapter when it comes to puzzles as well? I was stuck on Chapter 2's puzzles for a little bit. Chapter 3's was not so much. Oh. Well then, <laughs> full of surprises this building is. Yeah, we'll go around rather than through it. More weird machines. Very weird. Uh, press it down? Hmm, something must have happened. Something. Maybe that skull was just like, <laughs> it represents death itself. It's locked. No, we need a password open the closet. I'm tired of this! Um... Nothing happened. What number are we supposed to remember then? If that is going to be the case. Let's have a look around. Usually these answers are right in front of us, but we just don't have any idea this time around. What the hell now? Okay. That was a new development. Diane, no. Water. We need water to save her. It's not real. Even if it isn't the real Diane, this is too cruel. It's like sins in a way casting for our sins here the people that we've been with and I suppose Apollo will appear and his head will be in that bucket right below the guillotine just a prediction okay 
here's something. There's a red skull painted on the canvas. Art is subjective, but this is gross no matter how you look at it. Oh. I think the answer might be 22, but I'm not too sure. Okay. Let's see. There we go. Let's see what's inside. You've got a wooden cylinder. A wooden cylinder. Let's see. Let me see it. Oh, when I shake it, I can hear sound. How do we break it to get what's inside? Hmm. Maybe with the guillotine. A guillotine. Yep. What about this guillotine? Do you want to use the guillotine to cut the wooden cylinder? Yes, please. The guillotine should be able to cut the cylinder. I'm going to activate it. Okay, so there's no pop. Oh. Did it work? Let me examine, examine the cylinder again. And we've got... Oh, there was a key inside. Oh, yeah. Here you go, Luna. you got a black key. Black key. Just something along those lines. Or maybe because Apollo was quote-unquote killed at the end of chapter two he won't have a model corpse around here like the other two does very bad condition oh the souls are no longer there so we went down there each of the wisps disappeared can't go through there okay that's fine let's see do i still have this cool it's recording lovely <laughs> i'd rather it say stop recording than start recording this logs. Use the black key. Black like charcoal. Definitely sounds very, very charcoal-like. Burnt. Do you want to press a switch? Absolutely. And the chain goes up. Hmm, the instruments used to torture people. I wish these instruments have never been invented. I can agree. I wonder what this chain is for. That is a question. Hmm. If you're heisting it up, that does, does that mean there's something up here which we can use? Ah, okay. There's a disturbing skull inside the cage. We shall take the skull then. Hmm. Reminds me of the cage in Aria's story, the one which that book could capture you in. The skull, where would that go? Hmm, interesting question. Where would the skull go? Maybe we need to drape the skull in blood. And that's why there's a bucket full of blood down here. Ah, I am smart sometimes. I find it disturbing. I want to put the skull inside the bucket. Why is everything so gross in this prison? It makes me want to vomit. It's definitely the worst of them all. I couldn't bear to be trapped here. You save the most horrific one for the last. No, no. I'll do it, Luna. I don't want to get your hands dirty with this. Fine, man. You got a bloody skull. Now, where do we put this bloody skull, then? Oh. I've even put uh, uh, Celeste here as well. Apollo. No. No more. Please. And the eyes even skewered out. It's a train trying to torture us with this. Disgusting. Even Celis. Uh. Okay, so the painting is there. So do we put the skull here? Yes. And whatever door it is, it's... Oh. We'll try this again. Get past the patrols, and there we go. So it's like the skulls in the previous chapter. What's written on the floor? 108. Another disturbing room. There's a number written all over the place. 108. I don't know what that could mean. Any ideas? Luna? You're getting one of these dreams again. Luna! What's wrong? Does this number have a special meaning to you? She's making that strange expression again. 108. Maybe it's the date her parents died. August 10th? I have no idea. Let's get out of here. Follow me, Luna. Come on, Luna. 
We should calm down before we go back in there. You can't escape the 108. I know it must be unpleasant for you, but I think we should examine that room again. I would go alone, but I'd rather not separate from you if it's, nece if it's necessary. This prison is too dangerous. Let's go in again when you're ready. And there's a note on the floor. Uh, what happened? The room changed. Definitely did. Oh no. Tombstones. The tombstone is decorated with artificial flowers. But who's in those tombstones, though, is what I want to know. I can't look inside this grave. This grave. I can't. There's two people on there. But they both look like ladies. These girls are. Oh, the ones from the mirror. The ones that sewn his mouth. Oh, it could be some re related to Neil. I saw. The, I also saw them in a the mirror in the previous prison while I was with Celine. The mirror reflected our crimes. Celine saw herself surrounded by jewels, and I saw these girls. That's how I realized that I was here before my crime. Let's say that I, I. Maybe it wasn't related to Black Gear. I killed them, but it isn't that simple. I killed them, but at the same time, I'm not. That made you a murderer. It's a long story. That's why I wanted to tell you that earlier, but it doesn't matter now. This building is different compared to the others. The train is trying to mentally torture us by making us remember our crimes and insecurities. Since we are about to escape, it's trying to make us surrender. But no matter how cruel this torture is, we must stay strong. I noticed that all of this is affecting you a lot. But that is what the train is trying to achieve. Don't give up. I don't know what that number means to you. All oh, the red hue has gone away. But don't let that get to you. I won't let this affect me either. Let's keep fighting. What are these? Ah. Dear Neil Lawton. They don't have a future because of you. I already know that. No, no, no. I can't ever try and manipulate me. Hmm. There's a bit of a role reversal here. In the first two chapters, Luna was kind of the one that was spearheading the confidence in us. But in chapter three, that kind of... Came, became evened out and in this chapter it seems to be all about Neo at the moment pursuing um, the courage to keep on fighting okay so I did a dumb there okay there are many books in here if you don't mind I would like to examine them there could be useful information in one of them it won't take me long meanwhile you can't examine this room Luna Please, don't get too far from me to do anything dangerous. Don't worry, I'll take care of examining the books. Uh, it's a bottle with a suspicious liquid. These boxes? Several old boxes on the floor. Do any of them have clothes in them which, are, which we could wear? Ones which were in the same condition as when we arrived on the Midnight Express in the first place. There are several woodworking tools on the table. Uh, woodworking tools, woodworking tools, lots of trash piled up on the ground. Flowers! Oh, forget-me-nots! Yes! That's what we gave to Celine. Reflections of our past. There's a metal plate on the wall. A reflection of ourselves. This kind of, what is this game? It's a reflection of ourselves presented in these worlds. It's an armoured glass, impossible to break. It's a garbage can. You prefer not to look inside. It's a garbage can. Okay. Lovely. You shouldn't go too far from Neil. And you can't go through there. Well, there's not much we can actually look in here. Prefer not to look inside. There could be something useful in there. You know, something that could help us out. Incinerator. But we could go and. The incineration has been activated. Incineration in five minutes. What the hell was that? Incineration? Luna, Luna, where are you? Don't tell me. Damn it! Luna, are you inside the incinerator? Yes. Why did you go in there? No, that doesn't matter now. I must get you out of there. And it's closed. Ugh. I'll find a way to stop the incinerator. I promise. Hang in there. 
Save Luna before time runs out. I think that's part of the objective, don't you think? Right. Impossible to break. Right, so... Armoured plate fastened by several screws, so we need to find a screwdriver for that. Just a promise to make sure that Luna escapes from here, safe and sound. A book. A few drops will be enough to kill any living being. Uh, books. Are you sure? Woodworks. Knife. Screwdriver, nice. We can remove the metal plating. Um, screwdriver. Yes. We want to do that. Uh, dear Neil Lawton, don't you... Do you dare to look underneath the bookshelf? This gives me a bad feeling, but I have no choice. Bookshelf. Hmm, under the bookshelf, huh? Smash! Here I go! What so? Stairs! Lovely stairs. We could have done this while we were with Luna. Uh, teddy bear. Looks like a kitchen. Kitchen, kitchen, teddy bear. Is the teddy bear is wearing clothes similar to yours? Oh, no, no. This is the reputation of that day. There's no doubt. I must say strong. I can't say it now. Luna needs me. I must endure this torture. Okay. We got those. Coward. Don't you dare think of us as that. So, what can we do while we... Someone took the knife off there. Hmm. Righty-ho. So, what can we do with a bear? Hmm. Let's see. There's nothing inside the vase. gloom looking tree. Rope tied to a tree. Can we put the bear up here? Yes. And it should drop, right? Gloomy looking tree. Nothing in the pond. Wearing similar clothes to yours. Gun. No. There needs to be something else we need to do from here. Goodness sakes, Luna. Why'd you go in there? Oh, a few drops. Take it. Okay. Maybe we can give that to the suspicious looking bear. In here. Nope. You? Oh, maybe it's... The water it's... No. The tree itself. Any living thing. Oh, the flowers. Could be that. Could be the forget-me-nots. Yes. Do I really have to kill something that represents the relationship between Luna and... Yes. Yes, you do. The flowers have wilted. I'm sorry. Uh, take it. Got wilted flower. Uh, not down the stairs again. I don't mean to do that. I am not the coward. Thank you very much. Hmm. Put the flowers in here. Yep. So what does that do then? Still something else that needs to be done in here. But what can it be? The knife is gone. Hmm. Oh, there's another bear in here. Okay. Just a promise I'm good. Okay. Uh, no more from there. Teddy bear on a swing. Hmm. There's something in there. Small fish swimming in the pond. Uh, gun? No. Apples? No. There's something else that we need to apply. We need to make a dead fish, probably? They need to be mirrors. The rooms definitely need to be mirrors. Uh, oh! Searching the cans for a dead fish! Nothing relevant. Okay. You'll be getting out of there, Luna. It's just... Okay, rotten fish. Okay, we need to put that within this water. We need to make them dualities of a sort. One of them hun and one of them peaceful. Put the rotten fish in the pool. Yes. Okay, so that should open up the... Not the incinerator room, but the jail cell room. Yes. So there's a switch there. Okay. The incineration has stopped. Whew. I did it. We did it, folks. I must reunite with Luna. I hope she is fine. There we go. Luna! Thank goodness you're fine. I thought I wouldn't be able to save you this time. I was so worried. Why did you go inside the incinerator? I'm too tired. I can't think clearly. I need to get some rest or this building will end up killing us. 
You should rest too. Being inside the incinerator must have been stressful. Let's sit there. Hmm. Do you want an apple? They are the ones Celine gave us. They probably don't taste very good. At least they will, be, they will help us recharge our energy. Hey Luna, are you afraid to know what my crime is? I don't know what image you have of me, but I'd like you to know who I really am. I want to know, oh, so I want you to know because I appreciate you. I know it is difficult to hear the truth sometimes, but we must accept it. Are you ready to hear my story? I will try to be brief. We don't have much time for stories after all. Hmm. I guess it all started when my parents died in an accident when I was little. We were walking through an area under construction and the foundations began to collapse. My parents used their bodies to protect me and I managed to survive. Since then, I started living with my uncle. My uncle was a sinister man, nothing like my father. He was the only family I had left. We had a very weird relationship. We were like two strangers living in the same house. We hardly ever spoke. My situation was difficult, but one day, everything got even more complicated. Hmm, are we going to see a young Neil then? Oh my, we do see a young Neil. And he's patched up as well, like the normal version? No, I don't remember. How boring. What should I do? Neil Lawton. Hmm. It doesn't matter. Everything I do is useless. Ugh, my face still hurts. Why do they have to punch me in the face? I hate going to school. I don't want to go to that place anymore. Ever since moving here to live with my uncle, I couldn't make any friends because I'm always sad. They're always laughing at me. Why are they so cruel? I guess it doesn't matter anymore. I'll just let them beat me until they get tired. It's better that way. Don't think like that, Neil. I miss my, my parents. My uncle is scary. He only talks to me to say that I'm a nuisance. Nobody cares about me. Why did my parents save me? I wish I'd died with them. At least then I wouldn't be all alone. I want to disappear. Disappear, please. Come on, Neil. There's a full moon tonight. How beautiful. I adore the moon. I could spend hours looking at it. It's a dim light that shines in the darkness of the night. I wish I could reach it. I wonder if that's possible. I only see darkness. Will I ever find the moon that will light up my life? Oh, I could keep reading that astronomy book I borrowed from the library. The universe is so big. Maybe there is a place where I could happy. The librarian of that library doesn't happen to be named Clyde, does it? <laughs> I'll, I'll be a story of midnight train in the same universe. I'm too hungry. I don't think I can concentrate. Lately, my uncle only gives me two pieces of bread to eat. You need more than that. Now that I think about it, it's already dinner time. My uncle must have left my food on my table. Maybe today there will be decent food for me. I should go to the kitchen before he throws my food away. Yikes. A teddy bear I found in the garbage. He makes me company. There are books about stars and constellations. And a sewing machine that belonged to my mother. I have to sew my own clothes since I doubt my uncle would buy me anything new. An astronomy book. I like to read about the universe, especially about the moon. About the moon. You can see the moon through the windows. Window. A sewing machine that belonged to my mother. I hate to. S okay, I have to. S oh, I've already seen that. <laughs> there are several clothes threads in the box. Lovely. A small closet used to store clothes. Fabric I found in the trash. I use them to fix my clothes. We can't save at this portion. We can't enter them. Ah, but we can hear. The sound of this clock makes me nervous. I always hear it from my room. And it will become disturbing events in the future. The future indeed. Little Neo is on the save screen. And this is the laboratory. I don't like to see myself in the mirror. 
Okay, so the combination of sewing mouths and his not hobby, but skill set in sewing kind of went for that. He kind of silenced them from speaking and from there silenced them from living, from killing them. So the sewing is kind of like a representation of that skill set he had of sewing. And then you can work it out from there. It's my uncle's room. I don't have permission to go in there. But you can still enter there. Even if you don't have his permission. You can still technically go in there. But you might be found out. Just leave everything as if it wasn't inspected. But there's a bottle of wine next to a glass on the table. Oh yeah. It's, a, it's full of valuable objects. Valuable objects. Hmm, full of valuable objects. The first time in Midnight Train there isn't somewhere which looks steampunk. Everywhere in Midnight Train looks kind of steampunk. I can't leave this house. And in here? Okay. Huh? This time I only have a piece of bread. My uncle has a lot of food on his plate. How unfair. Should I tell him? But I'm not supposed to talk to him. Um, excuse me. Has there been a mistake? There's only one piece of bread on my plate. I've been very hungry lately. Could you give me something else? Please. Neil Lawton. What is the rule that you must meet to live in my house? I shouldn't talk to you, nor should I be a bother. Correct. I feed you every day, and you even have your own room. If it weren't for me, you'd be at Steamfort's orphanage. And yet you still dare to complain? You should be ashamed. Probably at the Steamfort orphanage, we would be having more food. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. When my useless brother died, I knew I would have to take care of his son. You're just a nuisance to me. That's why I don't want to talk to you or spend money on you. But unfortunately, I'm obliged to take care of you. Tell me, Neil, can you remind me of what you are? I am someone pathetic, miserable, useless. I'm glad you still remember our last conversation. Yes, that's what you are. Pathetic, miserable, and useless, like your father. That's what everyone thinks about you. No, Neil. That, so, no, Neil's uncle. That is what you want Neil to think of himself. That, Neil's uncle, is what we call gaslighting. Repeat it one more time. That way you remember it better. <sighs> I'm pathetic. Miserable. Useless. Again. Okay, good. At least you know how to obey. I hope you're already thinking about your future. Once you're of legal age, I won't let you stay at this house. Enough. Eat your piece of bread and go to sleep. You can't leave your room today either. Do you understand? And remember, don't ever talk to me again. Family is people who look after you, who look out for you and take care of you. Just because Neil's uncle is blood related doesn't mean he has the meaning of family to us. What should I do? I can't sleep. I'm too hungry. I need to eat. It's already late. Maybe my uncle is already sleeping. I could go to the kitchen and eat something without him noticing. Just a little bit. Just an inchy winchy little bit as long as we're not running. Let's just sneak around. That's right. Let's just sneak around. Not run throughout the place. Hmm. Let's see where we're going with this. Did you bring the money? Not yet. Please give me more time. I hear two voices. One of them is my uncle. It's coming from outside. Should I look through a window? I think they are arguing. That is a good question. But should we... It's a basket full of bread. And... More food on the tea. Oh, the kitchen counter. Oh. Oh. More time. I'm tired of waiting. Gosh, that is a frightened scenario. No, no, no. I beg you. I will be able to return it soon. 
No, I've waited long enough. At this point, it would benefit more, me more if you were dead. Just dead, please. My family still needs me. Put that knife away. Ah! Your uncle died? Ah! Ouch. Oh, your... Oh, your uncle just killed a man. No, 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 no. I must return to my room. If he sees me here, he, he will kill me too. Take a piece of bread with you on your way. Or you had self-defense. Okay, we will just hurry along. Save beforehand. Please, this can't be happening. I'm scared. So scared. What should I do? I need to tell someone, but nobody takes me seriously. Everyone laughs at me. Shut up. Stop telling yourself that. No one believes someone like me. They will if you have enough conviction behind your voice. If I try to say something, he will kill me. I don't want to be here. Go to the orphanage then. Save me again. I don't know what to do. Help. Moon, I need your light. I want to escape. Help. Someone help me, please. So that doesn't explain... Okay, but my uncle was the main suspect of that crime and he was investigated by the police. However, they didn't find any conclusive evidence to convict him. Only my testimony could have been helpful. But when I took the stand to testify... You lied? You saw that, but yet you lied? I said that I didn't see anything and my uncle was found not guilty. That was my crime. Perjury. Well, that was completely left... That was completely out of left field right there. I thought his crime had to do something with black gear. Like seeing an important bit of information from them. Unfortunately, the story doesn't end here. My crime had dire consequences. After the trial, my uncle ran away and abandoned me. My neighbours decided to take me in. They were kind people who took good care of me, even though I was always depressed. Depressed, sorry. During the years I lived with them, I started to feel a bit of happiness again. But several years later, I saw an article on the front page of a newspaper that surprised me. Two sisters were murdered. The main suspect was my uncle. And just like the first time, there was no conclusive evidence to convict him. But I knew he was guilty. I am also guilty of the death of those two girls. You're not. Although in a way you could have prevented that by saying that your uncle was guilty. Helping a killer is a no-no. If I had told the truth when they interrogated me about the first murder, my uncle would have been convicted and those girls would still be alive. I killed those girls. They are dead because of- no, they are dead because of your uncle. Not because of you. That was entirely his fault, not yours. I decided to go in search for my, of my uncle so I could confess to the police what I saw through the window that day. I wanted my uncle to pay for it. But someone found him before me. Black Gear. The organization that kills criminals haven't been, a, haven't been caught by the police. Because of Black Gear, I couldn't make my uncle pay for his crimes the way he truly deserved. My uncle will never feel the pain and guilt that I feel. That's why I can't forgive Black Gear. Since then, I have been secretly investigating the organization. I decided to become a detective because I want to be someone who reveals the truth. I don't want to hide it anymore. I want to capture criminals like my uncle and prevent more suffering. I know it's ironic, but it's the only way to make up for the damage I've caused. That was my story. Sorry if it was a bit long. Whoa, she truly does look terrified. Luna? Huh? What's wrong? Why are you looking at me like that? I don't think it would shock you that much. Is that the letter you wrote early on the train? Are you adding something? Luna, I don't understand anything. What's up with you? You have been acting really strange since we arrived in this prison. I think we've had enough rest. It's to do with that nightmare she had. It's time to keep advancing, I guess.
what happened in Chapter 3 has had a catastrophic effect on Luna. But where do we save now? Which way do we go? Um, but we must keep going forward. I understand that, but we don't have a save point. That's the metal plate. Um, maybe through this door? Oh. For 108 still continues. Okay, folks. That is going to be it for this point in time in Midnight Train. That is the first of many surprises that have come in store. But this game has always delivered when it comes to surprises. So, I hope you will stick around in the long run, folks. And we will see through this chapter until the very end. I can't wait for the ending of the game. But also, I can't wait for what's in between. The journey itself to the end of this Midnight Express. Maybe we can see the real sun again. So thank you all so much for watching, guys, and see you all in the next time of Midnight Train. Have a lovely day and take care of yourselves.